Welcome back to Investing in Trading Live, sponsored by Trade Academy. As always, I am your host with the most, Josh Lilquist, with my good friend and my good pal, Mr. Al Connickson. And on the last segment, got into some of the different concepts on what are some of the people doing as far as retail traders. Markets are showing, showing great volatility right now, which means great opportunities for traders, especially short-term traders. And that's where we're going to continue to discuss those different short-term opportunities in the markets, along with those long-term opportunities coming up. But we had a lot of people calling in and texting in for those investing classes that we're doing right here locally in the metro area. These are free investing classes to get started in these markets, to see what these concepts and consistent strategies are. If you want to come into one of those classes, simply just call <coughs> or text the word trading to the number 952 952- Nine zero five zero nine seven five. So get your phones ready. I'm gonna give you a couple seconds to do that. If you're driving, you might want to pull over. Call or text the word trading to the number nine five two nine zero five zero nine seven five. And that's for two seats for an investing class, one for you and one for a friend. We also appreciate all of our followers and subscribers on the podcast. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, I have a podcast, iHeartRadio, Spotify, you can go to investing and trading live. And make sure to subscribe. We do appreciate that. We are going to make this the global number one podcast on the financial markets. So, Al, in this next segment, I want to continue this discussion about that study that you had found um, that the University of California Davis did about retail traders. Mm -hmm. So what the study was is, and they, they probably studied several, I don't know how they did it, but they did a study on retail traders, which is the public, everybody that's listening right yeah, now. tens of millions of them. It was tens of millions. Wow. Study. Okay. It was tens of millions of, of probably surveys. Mm-hmm. And the study stated that 1% of the retail traders profit in the market. 1% are consistently profitable. Consistently profitable. Now, in my opinion, that's a pretty small number, and I could be a little... (laughs) It's pretty small. It's just my guess, right? Right. So that means 99% of the people struggle in the markets with consistency. Now, if you're listening right now, you're probably thinking like, well, well, why would I even want to try getting the financial markets then? That's the problem right there is people go into the market and say, hey... I'm going to try this out. I'm going to see if I can if it works. I'm going to buy a stock and see if it goes up and if I can make money. Right. And that is a huge problem that people have as they go in the market. Think about this. They risk their hard-earned money and just hope it works out without any knowledge or skill building to get in the market. Now, that's if you think about it, it's backwards compared to anything else that we do in our life. Now, let's just think about that for a second as a logical thought here. Well, what's a, what's a skill that somebody might have? Let's just say maybe, mm, let's just say basketball. Mm-hmm. Basketball is a skill, right? right? Now, is it available to anybody? Yes. Is it available to the public? Yes. Can everybody do it? No. But here's the difference. You have people that go and practice right. the skill of basketball. First, they learn about it. And then they go and practice. You don't see anybody going in the in the in the NBA just saying, "Oh, I'm going to go and you know go see if I can get into this game and hope I hope I win." You you practice your craft just like anything. If there's somebody is uh, in construction, they don't they're not. We'll say a bulldozer operator. If you ask the regular public to say, "Hey, go hop in this bulldozer," they're going to walk in there and say, "What the heck do I do right now?" Right. So you have somebody teach you how to do it, and then you do it. But that's the only way you learn a skill is actually by actionable strategies, right? Actionable right. Uh, learning, and then you actually do it, and that's how you build that skill. And then you continue to get better and better and better. You can pick any skill in the world. That's how it works. Here's the problem. People in the market, there's so many videos out there, YouTube, all these things saying, follow this, follow that, get your money in the market, put it in the market so you can profit long term. But if the public is not consistently profitable and you're told to go do that, that's the problem. Is you just go put money in the market and hope it works. Now, what are some of the strategies that I know you talk a lot about in these investing classes that make things different and you have more odds and probabilities of going from that 1% that struggle or that actually makes it to someone that actually does? Well, again, if 1% is consistently successful, 99% are not, 
there's another side to every trade. So somebody is benefiting, and, and I think everybody who's listening has to agree that there are people that are taking advantage of the financial markets that do extremely well. Warren Buffett is a good example. Well, think about this. People make money trading in the markets daily. And, if, it, if, and if you're not consistent, you probably don't have an actual strategy. Right. right? If, if, there, if there's somebody, if, if there's a group that's making money and another group that's not making money, it stands to reason that the group that's successful is doing something different than the other group. Here's the sad thing. The group that's not doing well, the retail traders, they have the same opportunities as the successful people do. They just don't know how to use that, what they're using. They, so, they're not taught how to do it. You're conditioned to do certain things that, to be honest with you, really make you a good client for financial advisors. They don't want you to feel or know how to do this on your, on your own. They want you to need them so they can get these fees from you. So what is the difference? Like, What is that outlier that makes somebody either well, consistent or not consistent? Okay, What's the difference? To, to be consistently profitable, you have to use a strategy that allows you to, to identify a price to get into an investment that has you getting into it at a point where the price is going to move in your direction, the highest probability of it moving in your direction. If you buy something, it has to go up in value for you to benefit. Otherwise, if it keeps going down, you're losing money. So let me and, ask you a question then. If, if Let's just say a stock is down. Pick any stock. It doesn't matter. It's just down maybe 5 or 10%. Should somebody just go buy that? No, absolutely not. There, There is a time to buy and there is a time to sell. And, and just because it's a great company doesn't mean it's a good investment at this particular time. But there is a point at, in time for every company that, where the price will stop going one direction and go another direction. The important thing to be a consistently successful trader is to be able to identify those turning points, identify when the price is going to continue moving in a certain trend, and, and how do you do that? Well, you follow the people that make that happen. Prices move not because of because we think they should move or not. They don't move because certain things happen that have caused something to happen in the past. They happen because when price goes up, there's certainly there's simply just more buyers than sellers. That it's more demand than supply. Price goes up. When prices go down, there's simply more sellers than buyers. That's the only thing that can cause this difference in movement in price. So ask me, let me answer this for me, Al, then. So let's just say our listeners are probably thinking, well, how do I pick the exact price Mm -hmm. where the market is going to turn and go back up? I mean, do you have to identify to the penny exactly? No, No, absolutely not. You don't. But there's a zone. There's an area within which you need to be pretty accurate in, in identifying that price. And the only way you can do that is to be able to learn with a high degree of of probability where the people with big money are going to be placing their money, where they're going to be buying, where they're going to be selling. So it's a a zone is what you're talking about. It's a zone. So it could be like from a dollar to two dollars, somewhere in there. Correct. That's correct. And and you have to use a strategy strategy that shows you where those zones are. We have that kind of a strategy. It's called core strategy. It's designed by people that were actually moving price, that worked in the markets, that still work in the markets. They understand what we call order flow. When there are big buy orders, price is going to go up. When there's big sell orders, price is going to go down. So to keep it simple, why not just follow that 99% of the people that are successful and be able to do the same thing that they're doing. Because almost everything they're doing is available to us as retail traders. So to paint a picture on that then is let's just say you have a car driving down the road and you need to stop somewhere between the the, the goal line and the goal line of a, of a football field. You don't have to slam on the brakes and tap that goal line and turn around. You can slow down. Maybe you'll stop at the 30, at the 40, or, or maybe it's the 50. It doesn't really matter where it's going to go. And that's very similar to trading and investing. As prices are coming down, you have an area of demand, which could be from $1.10 to $1.50, somewhere in between there. Right. And it, that's, why you, that's how you manage your capital too, right? What does that strategy look like? Like how does that – it's it's called core strategy, right? right? right. Now, there are steps within that, mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. What, when you have steps to a process, how does that bring more consistency then? Well, the, those steps, and, and they should be based on a set of rules that you follow, 
It's sort of like putting something into a funnel. You, you pour something into a funnel, you've got a big wide opening, but at the very bottom of that funnel, there's a small opening that, the, that whatever is in there comes out. Mm -hmm. That look, Kind of look at the, your trading as that. How do you go from the big wide part to that spigot, to the small spigot? That's the precise price that you, where you want to make your entry. Well, you use different time frame charts to do that, and those charts are going to do certain things that get you down to the point where you can identify with a high degree of probability where price is going to move in your direction, and it also has to move far enough for you to make a profit. So mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's three parts to every trade, Just There's an entry, and that is the most important component, the right price to get in, because that's going to dictate the other two. And the other two are an exit if you're wrong, and then an exit if you're right. And that exit if you're right means that you're taking the majority of the profits that's available. As far as an exit, if you're wrong, you mentioned a word before when you were talking about the driving down the football field. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the word break. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a way of putting a break on your in your investment, on your trade. So if the if you're wrong in your price and it goes against you, you don't want all of your investment to be at risk, just a small portion of it. And, and that's up to you to decide how much that is. But may, for some people, that might be, you know, 50 cents, it may be a dollar a trade, it may be a hundred dollars a position. You kind of decide that based on, on you and your trading style. But <clears throat> but those are the three components of a trade you have to identify. And in both of them, the entry and the two exits, you have to identify the two exits before you actually make the trade. You have to know when you're going to get out so you don't let your mind play games with you and you hold on hoping that you're not wrong and the price will come back. Mm -hmm. And then the same thing on your profit. If, if you start to make a profit, what do you do? How do you identify when to take that profit? Here's to the two mistakes people make. They get out too soon and they don't take the majority of the profit opportunity that's there, or they hold on too long and they lose it. So how do you identify where to put a profit target? Well, what if you could identify where the big seller is were? Mm -hmm. And you knew then that that's what was going to cause the price to stop going up and start going down. Wouldn't that be a good place to put your target? Yep. So now the key is how do you identify where those zones are? How do you identify a demand zone? Let's call it a buy zone. How do you identify a supply zone, a sell zone? That's what we teach you. And if you come into one of these classes that Josh will be talking about, we'll show you how we do that. We'll show you examples of it and show you how accurate those zones can be in determining you know, when to get in and when to get out of whatever you're investing or trading. Yeah, well, hopefully we've painted a picture on, on what that might look like. And what it really all comes down to is what Al was just alluded to at the end here was supply, supply and demand. A supply zone or a demand zone, an area where potential buyers or sellers could be waiting there to be filled in the markets. And that's where we need to identify, and that's how you manage your capital. But that all comes down to a strategy that Al was alluding to earlier as well that has has rules and steps within it. The good thing is, you know, when you come to these investing classes that I'll give you away seats to here in a couple seconds, so make sure to get your phone ready, is you're going to be able to see what that core strategy looks like because that's what it is. It's a strategy that's designed to help you make smarter investing decisions to build more consistency in your investments or your trading accounts. So it's simply to come into one of these investing classes. We have these classes all across the metro. We have our academy here in Bloomington. We're also at other locations. We're in Edina, Maple Grove, Wyzetta, Woodbury, Eau Claire. We're all across the metro area helping people just like you how to get in these financial markets safely, confidently, and then bringing more consistency to those trading and investing accounts. Simply to get your phone ready to just call or text the word trading to the number 952-905-0975. That's call or text the word trading to the number 952-905-0975. And that's for two seats, one for you and one for a friend for a free investing class to get started in these markets. Or if you've been trading and investing for many, many years and you are looking for that consistency, it starts with a strategy. Call or text the word trading to the number 952-905-0975. We'll make sure we get a date that when we answer for that class or we can, we can get you right to our landing page and you can pick your own date there as well at these classes during the week and on the weekends. Coming up next, we got more to discuss about supply and demand, odds and probabilities with other markets for trading accounts and for those IRAs and 401ks. This is Josh and Al investing and trading live 
We'll be right back. <laughs> 